In this video, I want to talk specifically about removing Schrader cores. And there's two different cases when we want to want to do this. One is when we're dealing with a charge system and we want to pull the Schrader out under pressure. And then the other is when we want to do it uh, when we're going to pull a vacuum. So we always recommend removing all Schraders when you're going to pull a vacuum or when you're recovering or when a Schrader is damaged. So those are the three different examples. Uh, initially, these tools were designed for cases where you had a damaged core that was, you know, say leaking, maybe it was overheated or the seal was failed in some for some reason and you want to pull it out, but you don't want to lose the entire refrigerant chart. That's why they built these initially, but then we realized that there's also an advantage because Schraders are very restrictive. And in order to overcome that restriction, it's easier to just remove the core completely before we do things like evacuation or recovery, which can take a long time as it is, let alone when you have a restriction in place that makes that flow rate smaller. So number one, when you're going to be removing a core with refrigerant in the system, quite simply remove the cap from the valve. I always suggest just checking to make sure that you have your seal in your cap. That's just a good practice anytime you pull caps off um, because I, I hate it when people put caps back on with no seal because then it has no purpose. Again, Schraders are supposed to be completely sealed. They're not supposed to leak, but we know in real life they can leak a small amount. And so having a cap with a seal in it is a really good Thing. I'm always looking inside if it's this type of cap with a seal. Obviously, there are also flare caps, which do not have seals. Then you attach the core tool uh, with it fully intact. Um, at this point, I'm going to have the valve in the open position, and I'm going to have the, uh, the end uh, pulled out, most likely. That'll make it easier to connect to the valve. Then I'm going to make sure that everything is all tight. My cap's on, my side port, my plunger. Uh, assembly is fully tightened so that way we're not going to have any leaks. And then I'm going to push in to engage with the Schrader. Now, one thing that's key to this on some of these tools is first off, don't over tighten onto the valve because that will compress the O-ring, which will prevent the Schrader from coming out. And also some of them can be adjusted with how they grab the Schrader. So you want to kind of test that first to make sure that they're not either too tight or too loose. You want them to be tight enough that they can grab the Schrader and pull it out but you don't want them to be so tight that you can't get them to fully engage and kind of snap into place. Now, generally speaking, you want to kind of feel, so you sort of twist the knob here a little bit until you can feel that it has engaged and grabbed the Schrader, and then you kind of bump it so that way you make sure that it is fully uh, attached and it's going to pull it out. Then once you've done that, then you turn it counterclockwise until the Schrader is completely disengaged. You pull the plunger out, then close the ball valve, so that way now your Schrader is outside of the refrigerant circuit. Now you can remove the Schrader core and replace it. You can put a new one in uh, if you are replacing it, which is the primary application here. Now, like I said, under recovery, you would do the same thing. You're going to recover refrigerant and pull it out for that purpose. Again, one really key thing here is you do not want to pull Schraders in and out under vacuum. I'm going to say that again. Do not pull Schraders in or out under vacuum because under vacuum, uh, you will have some vacuum, some air that's pulled into the system, and we don't want that. You always want to have the system under pressure slightly when you do this or having no pressure in it whatsoever, so that way you're not pulling atmosphere or air into the system. The process under vacuum is the same. You're going to pull your Schrader out of the system, and again, if you have no pressure in the system to begin with, which is you know the condition you should be under before you pull a vacuum anyway, then all this is pretty much moot. I mean, you could really just use a Schrader core remover, remover on the back of your screwdriver or on the back of your cap here, like shown. Um, some of these caps have a Schrader core remover right on the cap itself. And you're going to pull that Schrader out and then you're going to pull your vacuum. Now, before you disconnect the, the micron gauge or change anything after you're done pulling your vacuum, you want to make sure to pressurize the system first. So that way you are not going to have a condition where uh, air goes into the system. So you want to make sure that you have a holding charge above zero PSIG before you go ahead and put that Schrader back in. And of course, it's safe to do because you're going to follow that procedure in reverse where you shut it off, you put the Schrader in, and then you open it once it's all sealed, and then you can put the core in. Now, there will be a little bit, uh, maybe a tiny bit of loss that occurs inside the valve. And you know some of that's to be expected. There are some things you can do that are kind of on the extreme side to make sure that that doesn't occur. Some people will already have their charging hose connected, for example, and they'll pull a vacuum on that 
to make sure that you don't get any air in it. But the main thing I don't want you to do, and I see a lot of people do, is they'll pull a deep vacuum and then they go to put the core back in and they just lose everything um, that they just had. So definitely do not do that. So you have to understand the ball valve on your core tool. Make sure to understand, you know, open versus closed. Another thing that's a good idea is when you are under vacuum with any core tool, exercise the valve. So open and close the valve handle while you are under vacuum and that will allow any air bubbles that are trapped behind the ball valve to get evacuated as well. That's just kind of a good top tip for proper evacuation. All in all, they're actually quite simple to use as long as you don't over compress the seals. You, you generally shouldn't need to over tighten things. If you ever have a case where maybe there's a little bit of leakage around the seals or threads, you can use just a dab of nylog on them. Um, but again, don't overdo that because it's sticky and dirt and things will stick to it. But in general, if you take care of your core remover tools and you use good quality tools, then uh, they'll last for a really long time. Also keep in mind that some of them allow you to adjust, again, like I mentioned before, how they grab that Schrader in order to optimize that ability to easily snap onto it, but then the ability to also pull that Schrader back out of the valve. So that's it. Core remover tools are pretty easy to use so long as you use them properly and make sure not to try to pull cores in and out when you are under vacuum, but rather do it under slight refrigerant pressure or no pressure at all if the system is completely been recovered. Pulling cores is great if you are recovering or evacuating the system for speed as well as if you have a damaged core when you have refrigerant in the system. So definitely keep a couple good quality core remover tools on your truck at all time. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.